sexual temptations seem to be everywhere. And when there is a scandal that erupts, when there is something that gets on the news, on the headlines, everybody seems to prey on it and feast on it and talk about it and milk it and try to use it to chase clout. Now, what do we do when people fail and fall sexually? What is the right disposition? What is the healthy disposition? Is it to mock? Is it to ridicule? Is it to judge? Is it to subdue, subject, harass? No. The response of the believer is for him to approach from a place of love, God's grace, and God's mercy and of course to learn now the bible says let him that thinks he stand take heed lest he fall our assignment is not to gloat over people who have failed or to judge condemn criticize and cut them down it is to see what does love do in this kind of scenario what does love do we know that love does not judge what does love do we know that love also disciplines. So in cases where we have access to some of those people who are going through the, the pain or the disappointment or the shame and the harassment of feeling sexually, can we find out what love would look like? I think that many people who fall and fail, they go into seasons of depression or they go into seasons of sadness or remorse. At that point, what they need is intelligent action. What they need is emotional support. What they need is prayers. They need to know that it's not the end of the world. Also, it does not end there. What does it mean? That means that we need to correct. We need to discipline. We need to help build safeguards around them, accountability structures around them, particularly for those who are remorseful, particularly for those who are repentant, right? We see the story in David, a man after God's heart, who actually falls into sexual sin. And of course, it starts with what you could call modern day pornography because he saw the woman, the woman is naked, and then he went in with the woman and sleeps with the woman and then kills the woman's husband. And so you see the progression of the degeneration of sin and its tendencies. What do we want to do? We want to be able to confront the scene in the person's life like Prophet Nathan cons confronted the scene in David, but not leave David in death or condemnation. To lift David up in prayer, to support David in prayer, to build systems around David and to ensure that the mercy of God navigates. It's difficult for you to be a vessel of healing when you're a voice of condemnation. It's difficult for you to be a hand of help when you're a hand of horror. It's difficult for you to provide a space for growth when all you're creating is the place of suffocation or the voice of suffocation. So that's what we do. And then we guide people in discipleship and training and we help them find their feet, not in their own willpower, but on the word of God. This is the biblical approach to people who have fallen. Help them, show them love, confront them, and let the Holy Spirit bring them to the place of conviction. But don't leave them in death. Don't leave them in desperation. Build systems of fellowship, of growth, of discipleship around them until they grow into a place of strength, stability, and spiritual maturity.